Hey, what's going on guys? Robert Thompson Nishan, back with another video. Welcome back to the channel. And today I just kind of just wanted to share my updated study routine because in my last video that I posted about how to study effectively, even though it was a good video, I really feel like it just focused on like different techniques I was trying out and studying. So now I actually have a set like routine that I do in terms of studying for online classes. So I just wanted to share with you guys how I go through it it's from the point of like going through the lecture straight into the actual test. I also want to make this video because even though I made that old video about how to study effectively, I've noticed some things that work better for me, some things that I've learned didn't work for me. I'm going to explain why it is I'm doing this exact method at this point right now. And then from there, I also added some timestamps and just in case you guys ever want to come back to this video, you can always go back and rewatch the parts that you need to really brush up on or anything you want to just uh, understand a little better. And if you have any questions, as always, leave it down below and like the video if you really enjoyed it. So let's get right into the video. Okay, so the first part of studying material that I used to never do was just taking time to actually understand material. And one thing that I used to do a lot, especially when I learned about the active recall and the power of it, was that I would just go straight from the notes into like making questions off rip. And that's not really that good because if you don't actually understand material, it's very hard for you to memorize it and it's a lot harder. So now I can spend a lot more time just taking my time and just understanding material. And what I like to do now is I like to like spend time on like YouTube or even going through the textbook that the teacher uses for the PowerPoint and just figuring out why it is certain things are the way it is. And that helps you a lot when you're trying to memorize information because when you understand the concept behind why it is saying that, now it's easier to actually understand it. And then sometimes I notice that like, I don't have to memorize as much information now because if you understand the backbone or like the main skeleton behind what's going on, it makes it so much easier to just uh, get questions right. And you can also like use your critical think your ways to solve questions as opposed to like just memorizing street details, detail, details all the time. Okay, so the next step is gonna be summarizing the information. And what I like to do, like I said before in other videos, is I like to make sure I put the information into one to two pages. So that way, instead of having like 100 slides on a PowerPoint, now you only have to memorize one to two pages. And the main core concept of this is that you wanna make sure you get the general information. And then, so I like to do have one PowerPoint or like one page where I just have the main general information and the next page has a detailed information that's like very very specific to that exact thing and those two things are very very helpful for me because now I really go through the information and make sure I condense it as much as possible and this is the point where you want to put it into your own words as well as use different methods to memorize so like I said before I like to put my information like on my iPad into spatial arrangements to color coding so that way now I can actually memorize the information by where it's located on the page. So like I have times where I can go do a test and based on where that word was located on my uh, PowerPoint or my uh, iPad or my page that I printed out, I can see what, what words are associated with it and help me a lot, a lot of times get questions right or I'm just based on like color coding based on my key that I've had for myself. It's also very, very helpful because now you don't have to like constantly keep going through the entire textbook or the entire PowerPoint just to get the general idea of things. Now you have your own little study guide that I've had and I've noticed that like, it's also helpful right before a test. Here, yeah, right before a test, you can also just look at this real quickly just to get a general idea of the concepts and you can go over this a couple times um, every couple days just so you can brush up on the topic once again without having to go through the entire PowerPoint. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the active recall portion, which obviously you guys knew was coming. This is the part where you make your own questions and you may take all the information from the PowerPoint, from the general information that you know, and you make them into your own questions. And this is probably the most important part of this process because overall, when I first started doing this, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, like I was very, very bad at making my own questions. And I just didn't make enough questions. I made like maybe like a couple of questions. It's very important that you put yourself into a situation where you actually are forced to memorize information and actively recall it. So that way when a test comes, you actually can take a test really well. So it's very important to have detailed questions and make sure that they're very specific on the materials on. And some core concepts that I like to use when I'm making these questions that when I first started making them, I worked on was 
three main things. The first one is gonna be using the learning objectives from the PowerPoint or the syllabus. So most classes have like a syllabus or first PowerPoint learning objectives. And you can use those learning objectives to actually make the questions and figure out what you need to learn for that class. Like there's a lot of times we have a class that will have a lot of information and the learning objectives allow you to like condense that and figure out what actually you need to learn and what questions you need to ask yourself first. Another way you can do this is figuring out what the teacher focuses on or at just literally just asking the teacher what they want you to learn. And I know sometimes where I ask the teacher what they want me to learn and it's like one fourth of the information that you are given. So this little obviously saves so much time and overall it's very helpful just to do that sometimes. And sometimes my teacher will bless you, I'm not gonna lie to you. And then the last one is gonna be just doing practice questions from the textbook or like other places or prior years. And this just helps you get into the mindset of like, what questions are high yield questions? What questions are obviously, if a question was asked last year or two years ago, these are great questions to ask. Of studying, you get better at asking questions and you figure out what questions teachers like to ask. Like for me now, I actually have teachers like over and over again. So like I sometimes have like the same teacher again and again. So like once you have a teacher one time, it's very, very easy sometimes to figure out what they like to ask questions on. And now I like have a lot easier method of making my own questions because I don't have to try so hard to figure out what questions they want to ask me. If you're procrastinating like me sometimes, or you want to get the most bang for your buck, this is probably the best method is to do. Like just understand the material first and then make the questions straight off the bat. Don't even do the summary part first. Just do those two parts, portions uh, back to back. And then whenever you get a question wrong, like ask yourself why you got the question wrong or what you need to learn in order to get that question right next time or if you need to make a certain strategy so that way you can get the question right next time. And that method alone, like just asking yourself the question and then figure out why you got it wrong is probably the most important method in terms of the study technique. And like most math classes I take, when I was in math class when I was younger, I literally didn't go to class sometimes and I would just do this portion where you just like do the questions first and then from there figure out why that question wrong. And then and you can literally just take a test and pretty much good. So that's, that's very good for math classes, but overall for classes that involve a lot of concepts, you obviously can't do that, but it's also very, very important because understanding the concept behind why I got a question wrong can be applied to other questions sometimes. So that's why it's still a good method of choice, but overall it doesn't always work as much as in math, obviously. But it's a really good method to use if you do want to study as fast as possible or want to get information through your brain as fast as possible. Next we're going to talk about spatial repetition. Basically it's where you take some time off from studying or like you take some time off of that topic and you come back to it. And this is probably a good portion if you're not a procrastinator obviously is that you can actually forget the information a little bit or come through it or look at it through a clean slate and do that you can see what questions you have weaknesses on or what you're not really good at learning and then that helps you a lot because then when you come back to it, you can write out the questions and why you got it wrong, like I said before, and figure out ways in which you can memorize them or get the concept behind it. And this helps you overall just get a better idea of how to make the information stick. And the reason I like this repetition is because of the fact is it allows you to actually go back and figure out your weaknesses. Also, I've noticed that this method alone helps me a lot because now I feel like you cover all your bases now. So now Right before a test comes, you can, you're able to just look at the summary real quickly. You can read over it real quickly, just to get a general idea of it. And it's all, you're also able to ask your questions constantly. So you're in the mindset of a test. So the test basically is just a couple of questions. So when you do the accurate recall questions, you're constantly getting the questions over and over again. And you're prepared to take questions on a test. And lastly, and it's also very detailed as well. So that way you have both concepts of the summary and the detailed questions. And then lastly, the last page we had the weaknesses, where you wrote down the weaknesses, those are the questions you need to work on. You also, just in case you really did couldn't memorize information, that information is right there for you. So now like that information is very hard for you to forget it because you just looked at it again right before a test came. So now that information is still stuck in your brain. So even if like you're really, really bad at those questions, you know you're really bad at it, you can just like almost like memorize it real quickly and then that information will stick in your brain right before a test comes. Okay, and my last bonus tip is gonna be, when you're taking online classes, don't be afraid to go to the exam review or don't be afraid to like look over tests again because sometimes when you go over an exam, you notice that sometimes the reason why you got a bad grade on a test or a bad grade in general, sometimes it's not even involved with how, how well you study. Sometimes it's more about you yourself and the way you take tests. It could be about how well your critical think or it could be about how well you take tests and like test taking skills and memorization in total, like how well you memorize things. 
because some people memorize in different ways. So like for me, for example, I like to memorize like through pictures and through obviously taking a lot of questions. And for you, you can be a lot different. You can be memorizing better if you like, like to read information off a screen or something like that. And I would say that if really not going well on a test, figure out what it is that's going wrong on the exam. So like when you get the exam back, ask your teacher for the exam back on the online class, and then you can figure out, okay, if you have problems like critical thinking, like say for example, you got a question wrong because it was about applying a concept that you learn, I would say focus more on just the understanding portion of your learning because obviously you guys spend more time there. And then say for example, you did bad on a uh, test just because you didn't, like you just obviously didn't do well. You can also work on your test taking skills in general, like how to deduce questions sometimes. So a lot of times like on test is like one or two good answers or three good answers. And from there, it's very, very helpful to just take a lot of tests because when you're able to take a lot of tests, you're able to figure out what is the best answer or what is the answer the teacher really wants. So I would say focus more on making more active recall questions or going through more practice questions on your own time. And that really helped me out a lot because when you're in school like studying pharmacy or medicine or anything in general involving a lot of concept based questions, you're going to be asked a lot of questions in general and a lot of different quizzes. So it's very important that you focus on figuring out how to take tests really well, how to be very quickly taking tests and figure out the best answer for you at all times. So that's going to end the video. I hope you guys enjoy. If you, as always, if you have any questions, leave it down below. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.